What is going on everybody? Welcome to part six of the TensorFlow Object Detection API and tracking a custom object tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to export the inference graph and also just test it and see how good do we do. This is actually the second time I'm recording this. First time it was storming outside and I just didn't want you guys to be scared of like the tornado and when the cow came through and stuff like that. So anyway, it's going to re-record it. And um, so some of the stuff might be already done, but uh, the stuff that matters, hopefully I'll, I'll still go through step by step. So uh, this was the ending graph and let me just make it bigger. So um, as you can see, I mean, it pretty much came down to, you know, one really quick, like within like 2000 ish steps, it was down to a loss of about one or under and going to relative here you can see here it took the whole thing was about two hours um, but really even before the first hour it kind of settled at one so you probably could have stopped there um, but even after that point like if we really zoom out it's still slowly going down it's just the bulk of the learning just simply is done at this point so anyway it's arguable whether or not we would really need to have needed to have trained especially like this last like half hour like eh, probably not um, so anyways, uh, actually a lot less training time than I initially uh, quoted uh, was required. But nonetheless, uh, and especially steps rather, because uh, way less steps were required. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and see how we did. So normally once you have a model that's already trained, you just load in that model via the checkpoint. You do a dot predict. Uh, and you're done, but <laughs> not in this case. Uh, so, so what you have to do is export the inference graph, um, and then you use that to uh, to do the object detection. And and we're just going to do it via the notebook, basically that that came with uh, the API. So, to export it, we just need a checkpoint file. It'll load it in, and it load, and then we can save the the frozen uh, inference graph. So. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, we'll just minimize this for now because I already know I'm going to have to re-export that uh, that path. But anyway, um, so um, so the way that we're going to we're going to use this script, this export inference graph.py script. I'm going to go ahead and just open it up just to show you. Plus, it has I think some pre-written um, example for calling this script, and it does. So um, right here. So we're gonna just, I'm just gonna copy this and then I'm gonna go file, you know, and that's the under the example usage. That should be pretty clear on the video actually. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is just kind of modify this. So first of all, it should be Python 3 uh, export inference graph dot pi. <laughs> I really, I'm not sure why the dot pi isn't there. Um, under what circumstance would that work just without the dot pi? Someone let me know if that's just a typo on their behalf or there's a scenario where that would ever work. <laughs> anyway, uh, input type image tensor, that stays the same. Um, the path to the, the configuration file, um, that would be, I think it was in training. So it should be training and then slash this config. I'm just gonna click rename here just so I can copy it. Um, there, and then change this to training. Um, and then trained checkpoint prefix path to model um, this is that or trained model. So again, this would be in uh, training, training, and then model that checkpoint. And then it'll have like a dash and a number, and it would be that you know based on the number of steps. So in our case, the latest one is sixty-eight seventy-five. Um, make sure that you have all three. So if you like cut the training while it was saving, it might've only saved like one or two of these files. Make sure you have all three, otherwise you're not gonna, it's gonna give you an error. If you don't have all three, just go the next one down. But I have all three, so 6875. So 6875. And then output directory, just where do we wanna export this? So I'm just gonna export it to Mac and cheese graph. It, so to just make a new directory, it will. Uh, you don't have to. So it'll just make a new directory and it'll throw our inference graph in there. All right, so we're ready to run this, but I already know that I'm gonna get an error, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit that error just because you guys might hit it too. Uh, so, okay, we'll just start a new uh, terminal. Change directory desktop, models, object. Then we're gonna go ahead and just run this, but like I said, we're gonna hit an error. And before we don't hit an error, 
Right. So it's just this no module named nets nonsense. So what we need to do is go ahead and export. So you come to this, the you know, the TensorFlow slash models, come on down to object detection. Uh, where are you? Installation. We might have actually been able to type this out faster than this. Come on. Um, and we need, need to export this path again. Probably should just save it to profile, but um, whatever. <laughs> last time, guys. Last time. All right, let's export that inference graph this time for real. Wait, what? Oh, we were in the wrong directory. Okay. So we need to execute this in, from the models directory. Now change directory back into object detection. Up, 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 up. There we go. Rerun that command now. Three times a charm. Here we go. Come on. Okay, so it's going to load up TensorFlow, kind of make the graph, and then save the graph, basically. So, great, done. So now that that's done, uh, we can check, make sure it went there, but hopefully it did. So object detection, we look, mac and cheese inference graph, boom. There it is, we've got some new checkpoint information if we want to load from this point now, but basically we're, we really want this frozen inference graph.pb file. All right, from this point, what we want to do is let's go ahead and run the object detection tutorial IPNB. So let's go ahead and uh, we don't need to have TensorBoard anymore. Do we have the other one? Where's the other one? Give me this. Yeah, cool. Jupyter Notebook. And we're going to load up this one, the object detection tutorial. And we're going to make some slight changes. So uh, first of all, coming down to variables, the model name has changed. It is uh, no longer um, this. It's going to be basically the directory that contains that inference graph, so mac and cheese graph. So I'm just going to hit rename here so I can copy it. Boom. Um, we're going to just delete this line because it's no longer necessary. We're also going to delete this line, no longer necessary. And this line stays the same now because that file was indeed saved. Let me confirm, but as frozen inference graph. Yes, correct. Um, and then path to labels. These are our actual labels that it's going to it's going to uh, annotate on the actual image. In our case, um, I don't think it was in data. I'm pretty sure it was in training. That's probably my mistake. Just, but let me make sure. It doesn't really matter, but I probably should have put it in data just to be consistent. But um, anyway, it's in training slash object dash detection. So we'll change that. You actually probably wouldn't need to do that. You could have left it here. It would just label them as per people, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, object dash detection. It's just basically what what's the label name, though. Anyway, num classes, one. Um, download model. We're not, we don't need to download any model, so I'm just going to delete all of that. Um, and then it load in the graph. Everything stays the same. And then the only other change I'm going to make is down here in this like image paths, because right now it's going to load up the image of like the the, the two dogs and the beach. Uh, so instead, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to go from three to seven. Now, uh, this is something I didn't revert, so I'm just going to bring up what I did. Um, so in this test images directory, before you just had image one. Whoops. Anyway, yeah, of this dog and the beach. So what I did is I added in some more images. So images three, four, five, six, and I didn't, I guess I didn't rename this one. Anyway, I'll rename this one image seven. So I grabbed these images and just copied them from uh, the, where are you? There we go, images, <laughs> images, and then test. Okay, so these ones shouldn't have been fit against. So I just grabbed some of them from our testing data um, and just copied them in and then just renamed them. And since I found that extra one, I'm actually going to range this to eight. Uh, and at this point, we should be ready to test this thing. So let's go ahead and sell um, and then run all. And then let's scroll up, see if we hit any errors along the way. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Detection. What is it? I wonder why that one took so long just to load in the image. Just for image paths? That's weird. Anyway. Okay, here are our detections. So, as you can see, we detect some macaroni there. Some macaroni. Well, I'm sorry. 
macaroni and cheese there. And we detect some mac and cheese there. And then we detect some mac and cheese there. And then again, we detect some more mac and cheese there. So, uh, oh, and then some more mac and cheese there. All right. So um, that's it for uh, creating your own custom image, um, your own custom object detection. Uh, the only thing I'm slightly skeptical about is these percentages. 99, 99, 100, 99. Did I possibly make a mistake? <laughs> I might have made a mistake. And I'm pretty sure those weren't in our data that would be tested against. Or, I mean, that would be trained. I just cannot believe that accuracy. That's all. I'm a little skeptical when we have such high accuracies. Let's let, let's uh, uh I'm hoping for one that I, I I didn't take. I don't know. This one doesn't look familiar, but I'm not positive. I'm just kind of curious. Kind of curious. I really don't know because I tried to take quite a few of them. We could we could do like a, a very small image or something of mac and cheese. I don't know. I just don't totally trust when you have such a huge accuracy. But I'm pretty sure I didn't violate any rules. Let's go ahead. Let's take. Wow, that's a huge one. Six thousand by four thousand pixels. <laughs> that's huge. Oh my god. Wow. I didn't, this one's definitely not in the training data though, so I'm kind of curious, like, I kind of want to take this image. And it also has two macaroni and cheeses. At least I'm pretty sure that's not in there. I've seen so much macaroni and cheese in the last couple days, everybody. <laughs> it's been a lot of mac and cheese. I know one of them had, a, had two mac and cheeses in them. think this one's in there but like it would just be such a big image I don't think I took an image that large in my real actual training data let's go ahead and save that one we're gonna save that one into into that directory uh, let's see it was on desktop object detection Images, oops, wrong one. Why is our, um... oh, we're in the wrong one. Models and object detection. Let's just call it a uh, image eight. Oh, why are you doing this to me? It's such a large image, but we'll see. I might have to resize it, but I don't think so. I think we'll get away with it. So let's actually, let's just do like six to nine. Hopefully that image isn't too big. Wait for it. It might be too big. Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> Look at those tiny boxes. Oh my gosh. So definitely probably too big. I wish I could see the percentages, um, but it still detected those ones even. So, and I, I'm pretty sure this image was not included in any of the training data. Like I said, I've seen so much mac and cheese. So <laughs> anyways, I've seen some stuff. Okay, well anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take that as a victory. I just think those percentages are really high, but then again, I mean, mac and cheese, I suppose, is a relatively easy thing to, um, to detect. Um, I just find those to be skeptical. But anyway, um, that's it. Let me, guys, let me know how you guys uh, fare with uh, your custom objects. Let me know what you guys ended up doing and all that. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, something isn't working out for you, uh, let me know below. 
Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and I will see you in another tutorial.